Hit the road, Jack. No more, no more, no more, no more. Hey, how the devil are you? Let's get my sound set up as we... I love blasting at the start. Let's get that set up. How the devil are we? How is everywhere? How have you been? Have you been motivated? Have you been positive? Have you been focused? <laughs> have you been anything at all? Let me know. I hope you have. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, my, my normal, how the devil are you? Welcome back to the Gentleman's Talk. Your dulcet tones are being delivered by James Dean Little John. That's myself, the host of the Gentleman's Talk. So I'm here, and I've been away for a little bit. Oh, no, 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 I've not been away. As everything, I, I will I will, di- I will divulge, I will give you the information, I will give you the um, honesty of what's been happening. I think it's really important, and I've had a good couple of weeks. As you know, the last time I had podcast, I was a bit wavy, a bit up and down. Um, even had my close friends ring me going, dude, you just need to talk to me if you need to talk to me. Yes, I know, buddy, absolutely. And do you know what? It's kind of like, I suppose, the positive aspect of that is... It just goes to show by nurturing the right people around you that you get that support. And that's the important bit. And like I say, it doesn't physically mean that people have to do anything. But just by reaching out and letting that person know that they're, that you're there, that's the most important bit. Um, how they deal with that information is completely over to the person with the with the, uh, what's the word, I don't want to say issues because it's not an issue, uh, do you know what I mean, but it's trying to put it into a category, the person is having the um, the mental health concerns or w- whatever it is, um, stress, anxiety, whatever it may be, um, if you've reached out to them um, and, and keep nurturing that and keep letting them know that you're there, um, sometimes and most of the time I will say, that is worth its weight in gold because whenever and I always you know I always cast my mind back to the negative days and the reason I do that is because um, I don't try to uh, you know it's not like I, I you know I'm thinking about it and it's there and I'm and letting it drive me or anything like that what I mean is I always go back to those difficult days those days where I was struggling through life and I always reflect because it's really important to keep constantly reflecting on issues, concerns, or past things. No, I mean, that's a bit of double-edged sword there, really, because some people say, forget the past, it's in the past, it can't be changed. And I think that's rightly so, it is. You can't change the past, but certainly what you can do, and this is the most important bit, is you can learn from it. And that's why I reflect. And um, for me, reflection is worth its weight in gold, just as much as having somebody around you to let you know that you're there. Because that there's not much you can do sometimes that person can't physically do anything I've been offered that help and I was like you know what it's just knowing you're there is what what I need right now it's letting me know I've got friends it's letting me know I've got people that care about me it's letting me know that that there is people out there that that are offering support that's the important part about nurturing the right people around you because it's the dark days it's the days that I reflect on now and I've been through that um, journey and I like to think that besides what I go through on a, on a you know, on a weekly basis and, and with normal, I suppose I call it as normal mental health concerns, you know, knowing that I, I manage PTSD for the rest of my life. I manage the ADHD for the rest of my life. So for me, it's like I know I'm managing it. I know that I'm I know that I'm going to have those issues and concerns. But what I'm not letting it do anymore is control me to the point where it literally gets me down so much. There's there's obviously human factors. There's obviously out, factors outside of my control, like, you know, the, the stuff that I've been going through. Would I say if I'd have gone through all that, would I still have issues? Probably not as in-depth because I've got some really good coping mechanisms in place. Uh, like, say, my reflection walk, um, taking time for myself, meditation, uh, you know, mindfulness, a little bit of yoga, you know, those little things that I do, I don't do them religiously, all of them like religiously enough, if you like, or, you know, consistently is the word, if you want to look at a non-religious aspect. Um, but I, I do certain things consistently. And the one thing I do consistently is reflect. Um, and I think that's given me I suppose the I think it's given me the strength to be where I sit right now because I reflect on all of those negative times I all those 
um, disheartening times, the depression times, the low that I went down to. I, I reflect on what I what happened at the time. Did I feel like I had the right people around me? No, I didn't. Did I nurture the right people around me? No, I didn't. I didn't play my part. Absolutely no way did I play my part because I just had the people that were around me. I didn't really look into their agenda. Now, I don't say that. Um, I don't mean that in like a negative sense. Agenda. There's an agenda there. Um, what I do mean, though, is I haven't I didn't physically look at everybody and look at them and say, you know, do, does that person have my best interest at heart? What are they gaining at my friendship? Is it? And, and I, I say this because it's really important for your value, not because you want to be an arsehole or jackass and push people away. And, oh, I'm just going to fucking put, you know, bring him, her in, whatever um, gender they want to be, bring them in. Um, I don't it, because I want to get something out of it. But there is people out there that will do that with friendships. And did I do that? Absolutely not. I did not. Ha I did not look at my life and actually focus on the people that really cared. How do I know about that? Because nine times out of 10 over this this progressive journey, before I started gripping my mental health and gripping what worked for me, um, I was lost. And, and I, I often pushed uh, and there'll be people that will agree with this. I, I often pushed the people who truly wanted to be with me away because the people that didn't want to be with me will often but wanted something out of me, if you like. Um, and I'm not, again, it sounds very like get the violins out. I'm asking, I'm not asking for that at all. But what I am asking for is people to reflect on those incidents and utilize them to gain the strength for tomorrow. As I've said in previous podcasts, today's pain is tomorrow's strength. And that is really, really true because I reflect heavily on how I've, what, what was I doing? What was my actions? Where was my priorities over the years? Because my priorities certainly weren't my family. Priorities certainly weren't my true friends. The ones that have stuck beside me the whole journey. The ones that I've now, two years into this development piece, this podcast, and the amount of people I've got around me have dwindled right down, but in a positive way. Because the ones around me are helping me. And that was clearly apparent by last Wednesday when I did that final podcast and I wasn't feeling in the best of places, it was the anniversary, a negative anniversary of something, an incident happened in the family. I took that time out. So, and I was off. So, you know, I, I really need to rebuild myself, but on the basis of doing that podcast, my, my true friends, the ones that still continuously listen to me, all messaged me. Literally the ones that listened to me messaged me and said, James how are you don't let it get to you you know speak out I'm here if you need me and when I say that that was a, when I say that all my friends there was three people so that goes to show the the true extent of of this is those people listened to me those people came back to me those people gave me feedback and support even one person who I haven't spoke to for a long time gave me support and that's the importance of nurturing the right people around you that will hear your cry and go Oh, I'm going to reach out to this this guy and I'm going to make sure he's okay. And I did exactly the same before I digress into my podcast. I did exactly the same today. I did a handover changeover with my mate today. So we work in the same place on a Sunday. We work at the golf center and we do a, uh, we do a split shift on a Sunday. Uh, and normally I do the morning and he does the afternoon or vice versa, alternative weeks. That's the easiest way to describe it without getting boring. Um, and basically we had a changeover today and we change over uh, at two o'clock. And that's when I go off and he comes in or vice versa. And anyway, I just noticed there was something different about him today. I just went, there's not, you haven't walked in in your true vigor and spirit. Also, I was overdoing something on the, um, you know, on the green and he didn't come over to talk to me. It was almost like you could see that the grind of work was getting him down you could see the grind of life was getting him down and I know that because I've known him 29 fucking years so I've I've seen him even when I've been at my lowest he's optimistic but the, even the, the, just the changeover so I instantly come straight back and I was like dude are you okay is everything okay and he come back to me and, and this is the importance of nurturing good friendships he straight away went no there's just it's getting a bit tough you know I'm working a lot and you know and we went through this piece together and we sent a couple of videos, you know, to each other, a little like, hi, how are you? You know, a bit of banter, got the got the banter flowing and just showed a face just to make sure that we knew that we each other was there. Now, at the end of it, he was like, on his last message, he was like, yeah, I'm just, I need to just perk myself up. I was like, no, 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 don't, 
don't say man up perk up all that sort of shit you can't do that there's something that's awry there's something amiss what is it let's fucking let's change it let's do something to change that that's what i would expect i would expect to if i reached out and said look guys you know i'm fucking feeling a bit shit i would expect someone to come back to me and say let's fucking do something Let's go out somewhere, let's have a bit of fun, let's make a memory. Let's fucking get ourselves out of this rut, especially in the UK with the cost of living and the fucking weather is absolutely diabolical. So I reached out and we've decided we're going to go to the beach on Friday. Fucking fantastic. Literally only about half an hour ago, so nothing's set in stone yet. But we've had the conversation started that that's what he'd like to do. Finish early, drive down to the beach, have a fucking dip in the fucking sea. It's going to be freezing, but it's going to get the endorphins going. That's that cold water therapy. Therapy. We're borderlining on that. Not often you say cold water therapy in August in the sea. You don't expect that, but that's the UK right now. And then we were like, we'll go for a pint and a quick bite to eat. Absolutely, mate. Let's fucking lock it in. There's a Spoonsies down the road from it, and we'll have a Spoonsies after. And it's just about chewing the fat. A couple of hours out, go back, chill out. And we recognise that. I recognise that. And, we, and, and that's the importance of knowing and nurturing the right people around you is you can identify when things aren't quite right. And that's when you're supposed to. If you've nurtured the right people around you, that's when they will know or you will know when to kick in. Like I, now I need to kick in like my mate needs me. How are you doing, buddy? What can we do? I don't just want to get pissed. I just want to go and do something a bit fun. I don't just want to come around and chat and fucking get drunk. I want to actually do something. I'm like, fucking brilliant. Let's go and do it. Let's fucking lock it in, mate. Let's go down the beach. Let's go for a swim. Let's go play golf. Let's do something. So that's the importance of nurturing the right people around you. And that's absolutely what, I did, what I've been doing. And that's what kicked in for me. Absolutely invaluable. Uh, it just the pure at the end of the the podcast to get the text messages the next day to say i'm here for you brother if you need me don't fucking suffer in silence fucking give me a call and that's the important and that's why i feel so the rest of my week once i got that call became normal i relaxed for the following week and then i had a break into um I had a break into my normal week, my working week, so I had to I had to get back. And I, I, I'm not going to lie, I did find it a bit difficult after a week of completely shutting down. I did find it really, really difficult last week to just get out of bed and function. And I think because it's been a bit miserable, it's not been quite... And I suppose an element of me feels a little bit like my mate, you know, we need to go and do these things, but... You just don't think about it. You get caught up in life. And, um, you know, but but that's the importance of noting and everything. There's so much importance today. I'm going to keep chucking importance. Importance is the word today. <laughs> and, and I think it's because I wrote it in the fucking title. And it's absolutely fixated in my brain. And that's so as I digress into as I as I lead myself into the what I'm trying to talk about today, that's the importance of a reset. And like I said to you, I said I was in, I was resetting the other week. And I said, well, that's it, I'm taking a reset week. I'm shutting down. I shut my laptop. I didn't think about work. I didn't talk about work. I just fucking shut down. I literally just switched off completely. Now, that's why I think it took me so hard. To, it took me so long to get back into the flow, which is last week. Because I was like, look, this is fucking hard work. I've actually got to think. I've switched off for like a whole week. Um, and, uh, you know, and... I got back into the swing, but it did. It took me a little while to get back into the flow of things. But the positivity I had from last week was really, really good. I was nurturing positive thoughts in terms of the way I was articulating myself, the, my meetings. I tried to be as positive as I can. I tried to avoid any negativity. I got, I mean, I, I'm, I'm also blessed with having, and I say blessed in the fucking loosest terms again, you know, I, uh, I'm very, very happy that I've got amazing people around me in work as well. So I've got a couple of really, well, I've got a few, few colleagues that are absolutely fantastic that really, really do look out for me. And I'm very fortunate with that. But I think, you know, because I go into work and they say, how's your week off? Yeah, brilliant. Oh, mate, you know, and, and, we, and you have good conversation, good flow, good chats. It, it helps you offload. And then I got to the end of the last week, and I know I'm not sort of pouring into the end of the week already, but... Um, I chatted to my boss and my boss was like, how are you feeling, James? Because obviously I'd had a chat with him just prior to my time off. And I was like, yeah, I feel really positive. I'm just avoiding the negativity. And he was like, fantastic, mate. That's what you need to do. I was like, you know, what are you doing this weekend? He was like, I'm getting pissed. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'll have a couple of gins. <laughs> I'll partake in a couple of gins, please. Um, but that's the importance of resetting. It's so, honestly, and it, it, it brings like joy into my voice. Because that's how it makes me feel, resetting, just refocusing. 
yes, some things are a bit tough in life, but when you navigate through, and even the fact that I got kicked in the fucking arsehole with a two and a half grand fucking garage bill on the car and the gearbox went, and I was like, that's okay. There's nothing I can do about this. <laughs> Trying to sound positive. It's all right. We can save for it. But do you know what? There's nothing I can do about it, you know. And and I think that's where you kind of get into the flow. There's, I can't change that incident. I can't change what's happened by getting stressed about it. I can't. So I've reset. I've acknowledged I went into a really stressful situation. I acknowledged I'd lost a little bit of self-control. And I took that break away, which is a bit tough, which is why my emotional, my podcasts were very emotionally driven. Um, and then it just kind of, as that subsided and I got the support from the friends, and then I planned, I'm, I've got a big party event at the end of the month where I'm having my 42nd joint birthday party. And, you know, I, I managed, I was able to focus on the positive things, the things that I was really looking forward to. I wasn't sat there dwelling in my own self-pity. I've even had, and I will give a little shout out to my man Mark. Um, he's come back out. He's, uh, I'd say, he's come back out of where? <laughs> he's come back out. He took a bit of time away from social media. He needed that time, needed that break, um, and he needed that mental reset. And what he's done is he's come back. He's taken that mental reset, and he's come back. And he's like, and he's done the same. And even whilst he was off, he was triaging the people that were around him that were nurturing, you know, nurturing his well-being. He even said on one of his social media posts, you know, yeah, it's been difficult, been tough. I accept that. But there was people that were around me that were messaging me that made me feel like loved and, and supported. And I've come back. I've taken that little bit of time out. And sometimes you do need to take that time out. That's what's really important. We can go through life. And I'm going to say this because I've got vast amounts of experience in this. Um, if you keep grinding yourself into the fucking stone in work and life and just keep constantly going through and i'm a little bit of it for one uh, a little bit of that at the moment you know i'm really really driving to try and get promoted because why am i trying to get promoted because i want to have a better life for my family i want to have a better financial stability etc cetera, etc cetera. but what am i doing there uh, admittedly it, i want it to come along eventually but i'm pushing so hard i'm stressing myself out now, why would I want to do that? Well, yeah, obviously, my, my motivating driving factor is my family. That's what I want. I want them to feel safe, comfortable, and I want us to be able to afford to be comfortable. That's hard work to say and do in today's current status. It absolutely is. And that's a challenge as well. You know, you're being fucking driven all the time by, like, you know, outside, outside factors such as the cost of living crisis that, that will stop that and stress that out. And one of my friends, as you know, he's he's doing two jobs. He's working seven days a fucking week every other weekend. He's absolutely crippled. And I've said to him, sometimes you've got to take time out, mate. And it's sometimes it isn't worth stretching yourself so much to become, you know, debt free or work yourself to the bone to try and get debt free sooner so that you get affordability. And this is the conversation we've had because stress will fucking kill you before the fucking debt does. And that's the thing, you see, it's getting the balance right. Sometimes you need that break, you need that excitement, you need that memory, you need that time with that person. And we forget that, especially as men. I've even seen today, I was, I was watching an, uh, a newsreel on a mental health podcast today, and um, they said there's still this massive stigma, even with the young men of society, and I don't class myself as a young, young man anymore, I'm in my 40s, um, but they're saying now that Young men are still categorizing or not talking about their problems because they see it as a sign of weakness. Now, who's the weakness with? Because if you've got any other type of human being that's around you and you're nurturing the right people around you, they'll be there for you. Even if you're in a group of fucking like 20 fucking hard nail fucking, I don't know, football hooligan fucking wily coyotes. Even if you're with a couple of those, a couple of fucking ravers, you know, whatever, just fucking absolutely going fucking hammer and tong, what they call it, the old mosh pit, you know, and everybody's fucking angry and it's all excitement. And, and do you know what I mean? But there's going to be somebody in that group that you're very, very close with that you can talk to that will stop and put off, let go of that facade to be there for you properly if not is that group of hooligans or fucking mosh pitters and there's loads of other different types i'm not i'm not saying that they're the hardcore and everyone should ignore them christ you have to be careful what you say 
what I mean is, you know, it, it, you need to make sure that, that even if you were in a, a group that was inherently around violence and anger and, um, I don't know, it's difficult because I'm trying to, I, I'm just going to move away from the because I don't know enough about mosh pitting as it is. I ju- it looks like an angry thing to me. It may not be. I don't know. It's probably really fucking fun. I've never been to one. I'm going to stick with football hooligan hooliganism from the 90s, okay? At least if I stick with that type of thing, um, I can understand it. So, um, maybe you're, you're surrounded by these people that are going out, fucking doing all crazy stuff for football in them and all that sort of stuff. Maybe. But the guarantee there's going to be someone in there that will listen to you. Do you know what? I ain't fucking feeling right, bait, my, my bud, bait, bait. <laughs> that was a mixture of uh, mate and um, Bob and Dave. That was, fuck knows how I got that. You might have that, that problem with that person. You may, That problem may be able to be shared with that per- person to help you. And if you're in that situation, say, for instance, you're with all your fucking football hooligans or whatever you are, and you're kicking off and you don't fucking feel like you should be there, and you reach out to one of your mates who you thought was one of your mates, and he's like, fuck off, you idiot, you know? If you're in that type of... If that's the type of feedback you get, you're in the wrong group, mate. You need to fucking... You need to go somewhere else. You need to nurture the right people around you. Because everybody that's around you should want your positivity. They want to know, they want you to succeed in life. If they don't, what's the fucking point? They're a negative asset to you. And I think that's the importance, the absolute abundance of importance of having the right things around you. Listening to the right people, taking advice from the right people, taking support from the right people. It's like I spoke to one of my colleagues actually the other day and he said to me, he was a bit stressed out at work. And uh, we're really good friends. And he was like, he said to me, he said, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I said, how do you manage your stress? That was it. I said, how do you manage your stress, mate? He goes, well, I don't really. I said, I just spend a lot of time with the family, just kind of, you know, just sort of like, you know, we just coast through and try and manage it as best we can. It will be what it will be. And that's how he manages it. That's fine. Um, and he said to me, he said, oh, you manage yours through reflection walks, don't you, James? And I was like, yeah, I do. That's how, literally how I manage my mental health. I for me, if there's any scenario that's happened in my life that's either a negative or a positive, if it's afterwards, I like to reflect on it. What did I do wrong there? What did I do right there? And I know that sounds like crushed alive, man. That's really fucking hard work. It's not actually hard work because it's just thinking about the right thoughts, not sitting there and thinking about the negativity of life and negativity or the impact of what's happening at work or my relationship or my fucking family, whatever it may be. It's if you're th- if you're constantly driven by the negatives of that any of those scenarios or, or or more, if you're focused on the negatives, you'll never get to the positive of life, because that will be your constant focus. Excuse me. So what we need to do is constantly try our hardest to reflect and take the good out of every single situation. Now that may be hard to think about. That may be like, Christ, James, you're asking me to fucking rewrite history. You're asking me to get blood out of a stone. You're asking me to plat fog, mate. It's impossible. No, it's not impossible, though. Even if you've had a negative scenario, and let's put this into context and try and give you a little bit of something to think about. Say, for instance, you've got a long-term relationship, and it, and it, and it, it goes sideways. It goes pear-shaped. Now, there must be a reason why that's, that's gone pear-shaped. Now, to try and keep that amicable, What we would try and do is try and focus on the positives. Yes, there's going to be raw emotions in anything like this. Any negative scenario is going to have an element of of emotion. And if you're separated, there could have been, um, you know, there could have been an affair. There could have been anything that's happened that's made that happen, that situation happen. However, when you've gone through the emotions, you come to the logical bit where you're trying to think about the positives and we get to that bit. That doesn't happen overnight. I can tell you something, 18 months in, 19 months in since starting this fucking podcast i can tell you something that does not come overnight thinking about the negative and and this is me speaking from experience to let you know that what you can get okay you you may be at the early infancy stages of depression you may be just feeling sad and stressed you may be listening to this going fucking hell i haven't got nowhere near that side of things and hopefully that's great and you're like oh actually it puts my life into context hopefully it helps you that way but then it might get to the point where you're like sat there going, this guy's talking fucking gibberish, mate. This guy's fucking, what's he on about? He, he, it's going to get better. It isn't going to get better. My life's fucking shit. Shit work, shit relationship, shit fucking kids, shit this, shit that, shit car. And that's how you can think. And that's how I've been thinking. That's how I used to think. Even when I spoke about this podcast, if you listen back 200 plus episodes, 
most of those not most but a vast majority of those especially in the early phases will be negative and there'll be elements of negativity halfway through because of things that have happened in my life but when you nurture the rightness when you get to the point where you're doing the right things and I've led into this before and I said to you don't complain don't say you're sick and unhealthy if you're not doing the fucking the right things in life if you're not eating healthy exercising and and fucking reflecting and making things right around you if you're not doing the best things thinking positivity if you're not doing the, those three things as a minimum in life then you're setting yourself up for failure there's no fucking point you might you, you're going to you're never going to reach what you, you the, your definition of happiness now the definition of happiness is a very very touchy subject because happiness can mean anything from anybody um i'll tell you one sort of absolute impossible important another important thing here i'll tell you something i did so last week i went out i decided in my reflection time i was like i reached out to one of my friends and i was like oh dude how you been and he's he's having a bit of a, a an issue unfortunately with his um with his dad his dad's not very well and i was like he hasn't got long left so i so i've been talking to him every now and then just saying you know how's your dad you know how's how's things with you how's everything else and he was like yeah i'm good mate i said um he said oh, i could do with a walk i said um if you fancy a walk and i was like normally i would have said yes i would have put it off a little bit and i just wouldn't have fucking done it i would have um i probably would have been a bit of a fucking dickhead actually and that's the it's difficult because i can describe myself as a dickhead d doing things i've done before like i've let people down that I've realized I've let people down. I've invited people and I've they've not you know I've not gone through with it through my own fucking mental health. I'm trying actively to change that. And by that what I mean is he asked me and reached out and said, "Yeah, come for a walk." And then we we organized it for the Sunday, which was last Sunday gone by. And I was like, "Yeah, we'll go for a walk, mate." And then um he said it was raining and I went, "Yeah, yeah, it's raining, mate. We best not do it." It was almost like it was just an easy excuse. And he was like, well, I'm still going out, buddy. I was like, nah, I don't want to go in the rain, mate. Fuck you now. <laughs> that is so negative. It's unfucking believable So I said to him, I messaged him an hour later saying, mate, you're probably out, but give me a fucking holler on Wednesday. I said, uh, it was, so what's your next day, next, next availability next week? And he went, Wednesday. I don't work Wednesday. So I was like, okay, mate. Well, I work Wednesdays, but what I'm going to do is take a half day Wednesday and we're going to go out for a walk. He was like, fucking brilliant, mate. He said, I'll make sure that I'm ready for 12 o'clock. Come on over. So I drove half an hour to go over and see him. Parked up. He had a fucking bottle of water for me. And then we went off on a 19K. It was 19, 18K, I think it was. 18K, nearly 2,000 calories, three and a half hour walk. And we did not stop talking once. And I genuinely, I mean, I've known the guy a long time. Uh, he's my tattoo artist. So we've got quite a big relationship in that sense because you know he's been sat there for hours and hours and hours doing tattoos i think i've had about seven or eight day sessions with him um in the in the recent in recent years so day sessions are like eight to ten hours so if you imagine i'm 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 i've spoken about absolutely everything with this guy because you've got to keep the conversation going for like 10 hours um but so we we managed to talk but the value that I got out at the end of that was incredible. We were in the sun. It was the first sunny day last week. It had been in a fucking long time in the UK. We were walking all the way across fucking Salisbury Plains. And we just literally, we spoke about conspiracy theories. We spoke about family. We spoke about fucking friends, loved ones, all sorts. We literally put the world to right. We even went into um, finances, bit of politics and then we went we even went into a electrical vehicle charging and how they're going to fucking stop you when you don't pay and all this because it's all electric we we talked bollocks for hours but the the joy that i got number one from drinking water plenty of water on the way around good conversation sun so i was getting plenty of vitamin d and um and just just exercise three and a half hours of non-stop walking 17 or 18k 2,000 calories, just under 2,000 calories. It was a fucking absolutely exponential afternoon. Now, if I'd have sat at home, oh, sorry, at work, and just ground through that afternoon and chinned him off, we probably wouldn't have gone again. We probably would have just put it down to, he's left me for a couple of weeks. He's not really interested. I'm going to fucking move on because that's what men do. Because I shut my laptop and went for that walk, 
I got so much value out of that internally, emotionally, and through friendship that the value was incredible at the end. Now, you can get that from absolutely anybody in your group or above and beyond if you need to nurture that and you find someone that comes with that sort of joy, grab hold of them, they'll become a friend. That it, You can have that with absolutely anybody. And that is the beauty of nurturing the right friendship around is if they if you make the effort to do it that's the reward now the reason i say all of this all of this mental health process is a, is a journey it it really is okay it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to fix itself overnight it's taken almost 2 years to get to the point of trying to think positively trying to nurture positively that's still a work in progress that's still something i need to manage because i can dive into the negativity of life and friends like oh god my mate hasn't texted me he's a fucking bella you know you can still get into that negative space but you can just go oh, maybe he was a bit busy you have to keep constantly changing your mindset to think of a positive spin on that negative like emotion that you're feeling because if you've been negative for such a long time that will just that it'll be it'll be co common practice to be negative so it takes time. Now, what did I get out of this? Like I said, I had an amazing afternoon. Would I have got that afternoon if I'd have said no? Absolutely not. I would have sat in front of my computer for another fucking four hours. I would have churned out a little bit of work. I'd have been fucking just bored. and Well, not bored because it's not boring, but I wouldn't have had the exercise. I'd have been sat in front of my computer. I'd had a couple of cups of tea, a couple of fucking bickies and finished the day. Instead, I got really good at really good fucking emotional support fucking physical exercise cleanliness uh, i got you know through through healthiness cleanliness through drinking water i got so much positivity out of it that i came straight back and, and literally processed it straight away i said mate thank you and the positive that spin that spun out of from there was anybody can do that anybody can grab hold of a friend and go do you know what my priority is family friends I'm not going to, I say it to my mate all the time, stop fucking, t take an afternoon off, mate, and we'll go and play fucking golf. It will decompress you. Take an afternoon off that fucking job that you're getting fucking no kudos for. Just shut down, mate, and have a bit of a memory. Create a bit of time. Go do that event. Go see that person. Because you'll get the positives you want out of life. And then you've got something to reflect on, something to pull the positives out of. Even if it's a negative situation, it's a challenge for me. When I go on my reflection walks, the challenge for me is if I've had a negative day, I challenge myself to find the positives. And if the positive was you got out of fucking bed, James, and you brushed your teeth and you were in work for fucking eight o'clock, if that's your only positive from the day, take it. Absolutely take it. Because if you don't, you will focus on that day was shit, I've never succeeded. My boss even turned around to me and said, I don't feel like I've achieved anything today, um, James. This was on Wednesday. No, this was on Tuesday, sorry. And I was like, well, it's only Tuesday, mate. I said, you know, he said, no, but I've uh, literally, I've not achieved anything in the last two days. I'm really struggling with. And then we were having a chat and I said, look, mate, look, the positive is you've turned up. You've been in support for me. You've supported other people. You're there for people. If that's all you can achieve in the time you've got, then that's it, it's a win, don't push yourself. And that was me telling my boss, who a couple of weeks ago was telling me to calm down, and that's the importance of nurturing the right people around you. Absolutely, fucking -lutely fundamental importance of trying to get to the point where you look at the negatives as negatives and push them aside, and you take the positives out of everything. And if you reset, when you reset yourself, and this is why it's the importance bit, when you reset yourself, you give yourself the strength and energy to be able to process a life like that. Otherwise, it's just negative. I've had conversations with friends and they message me. I've got, I've got two or three friends I talk to, relatively regular. Say, how's things going? You know, what are you up to? And I say relatively regular. They're not my sort of close, close friends, but you know, I talk to them like once a month. But whenever we get the conversation going, there is always an element of negativity in their conversation, like, "Oh yeah, I've been struggling like this and struggling like that, struggling." And I go, "Look, mate, the positives is, mate, you're you're here talking to me right now, and you're opening up about this. Let's process it. Let's take the positives out of this. The positives are you're talking about it. It was really like my friend earlier, Kieran." 
absolutely fucking beautiful soul but when you see him in a bad fucking place you go there's something wrong here he's chipper and laid back there's something he should be jovial he's not jovial and i don't mean that as you have to perform that's just his natural personality is relaxed and happy and he does always look at the positives when he doesn't do that i go there's alarm bells there because that's not him he's a he's an absolute optimist so I reached out to him and he, he he had the strength to say, actually, you know what, James? Yeah, I'm not feeling it because of this, this and this. But his honesty about how he was feeling nurtured us to do something about it. So it nurtured us to go Friday afternoon. We're going to fucking finish work early, no matter what. We're going to go down to the fucking beach and we're going to jump in the fucking sea. We're going to act like fucking ch children and have a good time. And then we're going to fucking have a, a couple of pints. Uh, uh, we're going to come back, have a meal and a couple of points, and we're going to chill out. So that is what conversations nurtured. The conversation that I had with my friend on the three and a half hours, all of those nurtured him opening up about certain things about his own family and relationship. And I nurtured things about my family and relationship, and we supported each other. And also what, what it did do was him explaining problems that he's having in his family was like I was having problems, and they're similar to that. And I'm like, oh, so it's not just me. Now, sometimes and most of the time, we know we're not the only one. We're not the only one that's going to have depression. We're not the only one that's going to have stress, anxiety, ADHD, autism, fucking Down syndrome. We're not going to be the only, whatever your mental health or condition or physical condition, whatever that problem is, that's, that's a problem. It's not a problem. Whatever your condition is, that's the easiest way of saying it, James. You are getting the support you need. Whatever that is, you're nurturing it and you're supporting it. And that's the real, that's the beauty of it, is nurturing the right thing through conversation and helping people. Like, he helped me. Like, my friend has two uh, Down syndrome children. children, And he says, they are fucking hard work, James. We were going around, we were walking around. He said, nearly split our relationship and, ship up and everything. And... He was venting for a good half an hour. And I mean, I was almost on receive for a good half an hour about family and all this. And I just, but you could see he needed that. And then every now and then I did check going, well, mate, you're an amazing dad. You, you know, you've, you've got a roof over your head. You provide food. You fucking, you do whatever you can. You're there for your family in, in its entirety. They are that your priority. I know they are because I can listen to it in your voice. So I reinforced his, with his negativity, with positivity. Look at how far you've come. Look at what you've achieved, mate. And just sometimes, it's right in front of us. It is always in front of us. But you like to hear it. Some people are just nice to hear it. Nice to hear you're not the only one. Nice to hear your positivity. Nice to hear your positive tones or your positive spin on life. Sometimes it can get a bit sickening. I've got a couple of people that try and spin positivity on everything. And I'm like, fucking slow down, fucking <laughs> calm down, mate. All right. You need to give us a fucking bit of time for ourselves. Say some for us, mate. You're changing the world. And it ain't like that. But if we do things in small doses with the right people, we nurture that positivity. Um. And that's the importance of the reset. The reset has given me the strength to continue to do that. It's given me the strength to shut down my laptop last week. It gave me the strength to shut down fucking early on Friday to make sure I had time for my family. It's nurtured me to, this whole process has nurtured me to look at the way I socialize. Now, I'm a very, very, uh, I'm, the thing is, it's a bit of a weird, I'm an extrovert in the sense I, I like being the center of attention. I'm quite loud, quite brash. I'm quite fucking, I'll do anything fucking crazy. However, if you ask me to invite me to a party, I ain't going. But I think that that's down to my mental health condition. I, I genuinely do because that that's genuine. I, I, I try my hardest. But it's even like, fucking hell, someone's got a farty exhaust around the fucking, around the estate. Boy races, eh? That's the fucking generation that's gone from me. Um, He's off there hooning and tuning. Um. So, yeah, so <laughs> he's fucking off, mate. So, <laughs> laughing about the old days when I used to fucking whiz around in my little car. Um, but, yeah, so you, you, you nurture the right people around you. And, and socialising has always been a bit of a difficult one. Like, I, I had, um, so I had um, my dad round and my mum round uh, yesterday. I, I did smoked beef uh, on, on the old smoker. I absolutely fucking phenomenal afternoon. But the, the build-up to it, I did stress. They, they were coming round to the point where they even messaged me saying, yeah, can you pick us up, sons, we'll get a taxi back, we can all have a drink in the afternoon. I was like, yeah, no worries. I'll pick you up at two. That was what we decided. And then the next day, I automatically put, oh, I'll pick you up at three. Uh, and then my mum was like, oh, 
th- is it three o'clock now? And I was like, oh, no, two. And, but that was my, subconsciously, I was trying to move the goalposts, which is what I constantly do. And then they came around. They stayed for like seven, eight hours. We had some good drinks. We had some good food. We had good company. Now, again, I've only just started doing that because I've only recently discovered that I need to socialize a bit more. I need to try and break these barriers that I've, that I've literally put up in front of myself. And I do get anxiety. I know that I've got anxiety coming up from a, that my, my party that I'm arranging for the end of the month because I don't want it to, I want it to go perfectly. But at the same time, I still get stressed because I want everybody to feel like they're having a good time. And the ultimate thing is just to relax. But I do get a bit stressed. So I'm trying to preempt that and nurture that. And it's, it, it, that's, that's a hard work. It's hard work. But again, what we're doing here is everything slowly. Everything is slowly. Don't expect change tomorrow in anything you do. Even listen to this podcast right now. You go, tomorrow's my day. Don't expect by next Friday to be fucking hunky-dory. I've been doing this for best part of two years, just under two years. And I've been trying to actively manage my mental health as an adult. And it is still fucking hard work. It's still challenging. There's days where my social battery is out the fucking window. It's crazy because I, I was actually chatting to my colleague on um, on um, Friday. Um, she's an absolutely amazing colleague. She is, Mandy. Uh, she's a really, really good colleague of mine. And um, she she listens to me. She's a really good listener. Her her husband has, um, he has PTSD as well. So she I think she can relate quite easily in my mood swings with his mood swings and she almost like sort of tries to manage me a little bit, you know, like that. She's just an absolute, she's just a, you know, she she can see my social battery's gone. But she said to me on Friday, she said, James, you've got a bit of a reputation around DIO. And I went, what do you mean? And I said, I hope it's positive. She went, yeah, but everyone keeps talking about you. You're mentioned a lot. And I went, oh, right. And she was like, I said, I hope it's not negative. She went, no, it's, it's positive. And she said, it's funny because everybody says you're full of like life and passion and happy. And, and they were like, she was like, but they only see like a snippet of you and that's their judgment and she said i've seen you at your when your social battery is fucking empty and you just want to you've just fucking had enough your threaders you're ill with it and i go yeah i do but that's because i need to i need to nurture that i need to manage that and i suppose again that's the openness of having good good working relationships so they know that i suffer uh, two of my friends that are close to me in work they know that what i suffer from we've openly spoke about it we don't talk about it on, on a regular basis so it's just we've mentioned it so they help me and i help them what i do is i bring the positivity when i can when i can't they pull the positivity in and it's very much what i do with my friends as well you know my my friends my family i bring the positivity when i can but when i feel a bit low i want you to bring the positivity i want you to fill that void for me i'll do it as much as i can So that is the importance of having the right people and and nurturing the right things. And it's proven to work because, like I said, I've had my friend Mark. He's exactly the same. I'm going to mention my other friend, actually, Luke. He he put a picture up the other day. Thursday is is beers day with beers with the boys is Thursday. And I love that. I was like, mate, that's what it's about. Putting your priorities right. Having good times with your friends. Even if it's just a couple of pints and a chat, which is what his was. (coughs) <coughs> sorry excuse me so that's the importance of nurturing the right people around you and he's doing the same thing mark was the same thing i took a bit of time out i reset my social battery i've come back with more vigor and more strength the right people whilst i was away noticed i was away and nurtured that and supported me so he feels good everybody had does things in different ways but ultimately, our goal at the end is to get ourselves through this fucking journey of life as, as fun as we can, as happy as we can, with as many experiences as we can. I actually had, and I'm full of experiences because I'm trying to do more than ever. But um, <clears throat> my dad came up to play snooker. I played snooker on a Wednesday with uh, my mate Kieran just to break the week up, really. And he came up and he said, do you know what, James? I listened to your podcast and I realized I do need to make more time for myself. I need to go and do the things I enjoy. And he says, and I love coming up and playing snooker and having a a good couple of pints and just a good evening. And he came up on a Wednesday and it was absolutely fantastic. The the banter was fucking flowing for like two or three hours we were up there. And we had a really good time. He came away really happy. He even, now normally with most dads, I message my dad and he'll give me the fucking thumbs up emoji um, because he's almost 70. I'm literally going to, I want to smash that fucking thumbs up emoji right in the side of his face. 
because I'm like, fuck your thumbs up emoji. This is what all dads seem to fucking do. I got my other mate, Bilster. He started doing it to me now, giving me a thumbs up. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking ram that thumbs up up your ass. I'm probably on the back of this going to get more people fucking thumbs up in me because they now know it fucks me off. So fun times ahead for James. But hey, you you made your bed, mate. Fucking lie in it. So he, he sent me the emoji, but I actually got a video message back from him saying, son, thanks for this evening. Absolutely enjoyed it. I'm going to come up every Wednesday. It's a couple of hours. It gets me out. It gives me that spirit. It gives me that. It gives me something to look forward to. And I'm like, mate, that's what we need. I need time with you. You need time with me. Let's fucking have a good time. Let's fucking play snooker. We had a couple of pints. And that's the importance of life. It's not about what you achieve in work. Oh, my God, have you done that by the end of the week? Oh, you fucking absolute legend. What life is about is what your experiences are. What fun you've got. What memories you've got. That's what I said to my dad when we come up. We were chatting on um, Saturday when he came around yesterday. And we were, we were three or four pints in. We were in the clock and balls, the famous clock and balls. It's my bar. And we were sat there and, and we were just chatting away. And he was just... You could see he was just a different person in the sense of he'd li- he's listened to my podcast and he's you could just see he was a different person on how his perspective how his perception was, and he was like, no, we, you you get one chance at life, mate. And even he said, he went to buy something the other day. He's he, I suppose he he's a little bit he's you know he's at seventy he doesn't have to worry too much about money. The kids have fucking gone off his house is paid for. He's in that lucky category. However, he's also in that lucky category that's in his seventies. And, um, you know, they worry about, you know, how long we're going we're gonna to live for and everything. And, and rightly so. As much as I, you know, that day for me will never come. It will never come. I know that. But it, that's what I like to believe. Um, the reality is, unfortunately, someday it will come. So, but he goes through that worries. And I go, well, now you need to fucking just, you need to smash life even more, mate. I said, stop spending money on fucking, f- on, on material things. Because you can't take those material things with you. And they're almost worthless when you go because there's nothing in it. We were talking about this um, on Wednesday on our walk. What is the point in having all this material thing around you? All these materials, you can't take them with you unless they're a gift. But to keep constantly going out and buying material stuff, and I'm a fucker for it. I've got fucking trainers coming out my ears from when I've had an addiction to fucking buying Adidas trainers. Great for Adidas. Great for people in stocks in Adidas. Fucking shit for me. However, I've got about 10 years worth of trainers to fucking plod through. So maybe look at it as forward planning. However, they go out of fucking fashion. But eventually, in 10 years' time, the way I look at it is my, my original trainers will be back in fashion again in 10 years' time. And they'll be worth double the amount because they'll be cool as fuck. So <laughs> that's, what I'm bas- that's what I'm hanging on to anyway. So it's important. And this is what I say to my dad. I was like, mate, you need to get the experiences. If you're not, what do, do you get more value out of buying that thing there and at the time we were talking about a fucking ipad case that was going to cost him 20 pounds i said so you're going to spend 20 pound on that if you come up to the club on a wednesday and you spend a tenner what what do you think is more valuable in those two well he was like well obviously the memory of coming up and having a good night is providing it's a good night i was like yeah that's a memory they can't take that from you so for me, that is the getting your priorities right in life and having the fun when you can have the fun, having the right people around you that you want to have the fun with. I nurture this all day long. And it's really it's so important. And, and, I, and I divulge back into the reset aspect because it's really important. And the reason I, I mean, I almost reset every day. So my reset is is evolved. I'm not talking about a week off going to a fucking holiday somewhere and just switching off for a week as a reset. I actively try to reset every day. So I try to, at the end of every single day, I go for a, a walk straight after work. I walk my fucking dog. And um, I tell you fucking a lot, it's not my fucking dog. I walk my lovely dog. And um, yeah, I reflect on the day to get it out the way. What's the positives from today? I turned up. <laughs> fucking, fucking brilliant. I made a mean cup of tea. All right, if that's your only positive, so fucking what? Next, tomorrow, what you'll try and do is try and... I don't know, do something else, finish that project or start that project. Or do something. You just need to manage your day. It's so important. But look at the positives. Everything takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. No mental health journey have I ever heard anybody say to me in a mental health journey. Yeah, I, I, I'm I fucking diagnosed with, di- uh, with di- depression on fucking Monday. I was cleared. I took my tablets on Tuesday. 
I was there's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> took my tablets on Tuesday. <laughs> it's a shaggy song, isn't it? <laughs> I shouldn't mess around. Sorry. Um, and then by Friday, I'm fucking killed. Nobody's ever said that. Nobody. I've been on antidepressants for fucking six years. <laughs> Nobody's ever said to me, James. Even to the point where my doctor's like, even if you come off them, James, it's going to take you a year to come off them. Because it, it'll fuck your mind up. So I was like, okay. So it's nothing in mental health happens overnight. You have to do the right things. You can't literally pull away from a friend tomorrow and go, fucking mate, you're toxic as fuck. I'm leaving away. I'm moving away from you. You have to do things progressively. You have to nurture the right people around you. Remove the people that are giving you that toxicity. And that's what I do in work. People come at me with negative and I go, right, stop. Okay, what you're saying is negative, but let's look at a positive. It, it is that negative that you're displaying to me right now? Is it affecting you directly? No. Does it have any impact on you at all? no okay so why are we talking about it if it doesn't directly affect you and it's got no impact on you then don't worry about it it's not your problem carry on with what you're doing if it does how can we improve it so that doesn't happen and that's the importance of, of nurturing positivity because if we just live in a world where everything's fucking shit we're going to be swimming in shit and we're going to fucking stink and we're going to fucking hate it because we're surrounded by stink and we're fucking, we're sat in stink, we're eating stink, and nobody wants to do that. So what we need to do is nurture the right things. Nurture the right people. Nurture positivity. Organise events with your friends. Make the effort with your friends. Get yourself healthy. Go and do that exercise. Go for that walk. I mean, that three and a half hour walk, 2,000 calories, didn't feel, I felt a little bit fucking stiff in the old legs the next day. Because I hadn't used the old fucking tree trunks in a while. But I felt amazing in the afternoon. Bit of doms. Wednesday, uh, th Friday, absolutely fucking perfect. And that's because I didn't run. I didn't fuck my knees up. I just took a, a, a three and a half hour stroll. Chatting. Getting what I can out of life. Walking away with memories. What that is, that nurtured a closer bond, a closer friendship with him. We ended up actually helping each other out at the end. We've offered each other's help. So he's he's sorted some bits out. So he needs a little bit of painting and decorating. And I was like, mate, give me a shout. I'll come over on a Saturday. I'll help you. He was like, would you? I said, because I was going to do it on my own and it's a struggle. I said, like, yeah, I'll come across and help you, mate. Problem fucking shared. Problem halved. Now, that little kind act of kindness, would I have done that before? No, probably not. Would I have even gone over there before? Probably not. There'll be people that listen to this that go, James, no, you bottle out of everything. And I don't bottle out of things on purpose. I genuinely can't control it sometimes. And that's what I'm actively trying to change. That's the next step. And like I said, I've got milestones. I asked you all at the start of the year to, to pull your milestones together. Hopefully you did that. And if you didn't, that's that's your choice. But hopefully you're hitting those milestones. I am actually hitting my milestones. At the milestones, do I feel better? Do I need to carry on doing that a little bit more? Brilliant. If I don't, move on. Next milestone. What am I going to next? What's the next thing I'm going to develop? What's the next thing I'm going to work on? And at the moment, I'm working on my emotions. I'm working on not trying to get as angry. Not trying to get as stressed out. Naturally, I do anyway. But I try, I'm trying to calm it down. I'm just trying to just plateau a little bit. Just trying to get myself, get my shit in order. And that's the importance of everything, I think. So um, anyway, I'm going to leave it there, actually, because I got well into the swing of things there. Christ, that, was, that flew by. Um, so really, the importance of this is, I suppose it's just one of those positive messages from me, really, where I'm just trying to say to you that, you know, life can be a bit shit. And it is a bit shit. Um, I've said to you that sometimes it is just life. Um, nurturing the right people around you and, and having the right positivity. Trying to actively look at the positives in the negatives and say the positives out loud and don't focus on the negatives. Don't say it fakely either. I've got I've got a couple of friends of mine that say it and you, you look at them and go, you're just saying that for my gratification. Really, I think you're, you know, down deep down, you've got a little bit more work to do on, you know, on yourself to get yourself right. Um, and that's the importance and that's why we take ownership of ourselves that's why we you know we, we need to do that we have to actively make the decision i actively make the decision this this platform works for me because i'm able to talk out things process things 
I've got my own coping mechanisms in place where I reflect all the time and that reflection is such an important process for my life. It seems to be my meditation, my mental health stimulation is going on a reflection walk because it's, excuse me, I'm talking again, um, obviously, um, but that's the important step for me. It works. Whether it's with music, whether it's just my head, I go out there and I focus on the day. And I do that religiously every single day. There is consistency there. It's become the learned habit. Monday to Sunday, every single day, I at least get one as a minimum reflection walk in. And it's always going to be every single time at the end of the day. So it's either straight after work or normally, like I say, after this podcast now, I'll be going to take my dog for his final walk. And that's when I reflect and I go, Do you know, what's the positives from today? OK, so for, for instance, I've I worked today. So the positives are I got up, I went to work, I did a really good job. And you could turn around and say, well, you know, and if I'd have thought about the negatives, I'm tired. I didn't want to go to work, etc., etc. You know, there's negatives all the time. So you, see, so you can see that, yeah, I went to work today. I uh, couldn't really be asked. Didn't want to work on a Sunday. Fucking tiring. Really fucking manual labor. Physically demanding. Couldn't really be asked. It was just a fucking bit of a ball ache, really. And then the weather was shit. And then, you know, and that's where you just, if you spoke in that tone, whereas I went, do you know what? I went to work today, did a fucking fairly good job. You know, weather was a bit crappy, but do you know what? I got some spells of, uh, I got some spells of sun. I got to chat to a few people. It wasn't really that bad, and I've earned a few quid. You know, so that for me is the positives. And I go, okay, so fine. I, I, I got through it. You know, there's an extra couple of quid in the bank for the end of the month. Pay something else off. And that's the importance of looking at it. And then when I came back, I did, what did you do in the afternoon? Do you know, I did nothing because I fully relaxed. I achieved a podcast. I've done a reflection walk. There's so much positivity you do on a daily basis. If you focus on everything being shit, either the fact is you're doing it too much, so it's become boring, or it's just not for you and you shouldn't be doing it. So there's, I mean, we, we have to compromise and get that, but do the things that make you happy. I've seen a change in my dad when he came up on um, on the snooker night and just his general happiness, the way that he was walking around the table having banter like he was one, you know, he's, he was with the lads. It wasn't father, son. It was it was good banter with between the three of us, me, my mate and uh, Kieran and my dad. We had a really good time and I saw his happiness that escalated into or oh, elevated, sorry, uh, elevated into him sending me a thank you message via video, not just a fucking thumbs up. Tommy thumbs up, mate. It was a proper thank you message, and we're going to do it more often. So it's the importance. He felt happier. I felt happier. I got the social aspect. He got the social aspect. We got the positives out of it. So there we go. Nurture the right people. Take the resets when you can. And the additional message here is try and take the, as many positives out of life as you can. It is so, so, so important. Thank you very much for listening to me. I really, as always, appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to try and set my video up. So I'm going to try and get my YouTube video so I can cast my video as I'm as I'm talking away to you just to add an element of something different. I've been talking about it a while, but I've managed to get the setup where I can give myself that. So watch this space on YouTube and uh, obviously all other platforms, Spotify and all that for the for the podcast. So thank you very much for listening to me. I really appreciate your time. I hope you've um, reflected yourself this weekend and you're going to hit next week positively full of focus full of drive and just have an amazing week it's really really important so thanks for listening to me and uh, take care everyone love you all bye <laughs> that sounded really wrong actually i'm not even gonna say that <laughs> love you all bye <laughs> love you all guy thanks for many uh, thanks for listening to me i love you all and i'll speak to you soon